So far in class, we've seen how to use Lagrangians to solve uh, problems where things are moving in linear motion. And I've also shown you how to uh, treat the Lagrangian of objects that are rotating about, say, one axis. Um, but what about systems that are rotating or systems where it would make more sense to use spherical coordinates instead of Cartesian coordinates? Uh, so today I'm going to show you how to write your Lagrangian in spherical coordinates. So for our regular Lagrangian, Cartesian coordinates, we had t minus v, where t was our kinetic energy, 1 half m, and we could just write x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared minus the potential. And so these Cartesian coordinates look like this. So this is your x, y, and z axes. Then you could describe some point here using those x, y, and z coordinates. But we can also uh, use other coordinate systems. So for example, spherical coordinates, we would use this vector r to describe the distance from the origin to this point, the angle theta here, which is the angle off of the z-axis. And then this angle phi here, which is the angle off of the x-axis. Okay, so this point here could be written x, y, z or it could be written r theta phi. Okay, so if those are our potential coordinates, how do we go from this Lagrangian written in Cartesian coordinates to a Lagrangian written in spherical coordinates? So to do that, we need the relationships between the x, y, and z coordinates and the r, theta, and phi coordinates. So x equals r sine theta cosine phi, y equals r sine theta sine phi, and then z equals r cosine theta. So now what we're going to have to do is calculate each of these derivatives, square them, and then put them all together. So I'll do that on the next page. And I'm going to uh, use different colors as I go, and you'll see why at the end. So for our r dot, we need to take the time derivative of r sine theta cosine phi. So, oh, for, sorry, this is, for x dot, we need to take this time derivative of r sine theta 
cosine phi and so r theta and phi can all depend they can all vary in time so this is we're going to have to use the product rule and there's three terms so there's going to be three terms that we have to add together when we take this derivative so the derivative of r with respect to t is r dot, and then the other terms, the derivative of the second term would be, so the derivative of sine is cosine, but then we have to use the chain rule to take the derivative of the inside term, which was theta dot, and then the time derivative of cosine phi. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then the derivative of inside is phi dot. So this is negative r sine theta sine phi phi dot. Okay, so now we need to square this term, x dot squared. So there's three terms here. So if you want to square something that has three terms in it, then you would get nine terms total. Uh, but because we're squaring something with itself, uh, several of those are just going to be cross terms where we get two times some value. And so we're going to only end up needing to write down six terms. So the first term, we square this first thing, r dot squared, sine squared, sine squared, theta, cosine squared phi. Now I'm going to switch colors. So the next term, if we square this, is r squared, cosine squared theta cosine squared phi, theta dot squared, and then if we square the last term, we get r squared sine squared theta sine squared phi, phi dot squared. Okay, so that's those are all the squared terms, but now we need the cross terms. And so the first cross term is 2r dot sine theta cosine phi times r cosine theta cosine phi theta dot And now we have a minus two r dot sine theta cosine phi r sine theta sine phi phi dot and then the last term minus two r squared sine theta sine phi cosine theta cosine phi theta dot phi dot. Okay, so those are the six terms from x dot squared. So now we do 
that all again for y dot. So y dot is the time derivative of r sine theta sine phi. So again, taking this time derivative will give us three terms, r dot sine theta sine phi plus r cosine theta sine phi theta dot squared plus r sine theta cosine phi phi dot. Oh, this should not be squared. Okay, so now we will square that again. And again, I'm gonna color code things, color code things uh, so that we can more easily see what's gonna cancel and what's not gonna cancel. So y dot squared, if we square this first term, we get r dot squared sine squared theta sine squared phi. Squaring the second term, you get r squared cosine squared theta sine squared phi theta dot squared. And then if we square the last term, you get r squared sine squared theta cosine squared phi phi dot squared. Okay. Then the cross terms will look like this to r dot r sine theta sine squared phi cosine theta theta dot plus to r dot r sine squared theta sine phi cosine phi phi dot. And then the last term, two r squared sine theta sine phi, cosine theta, cosine phi, theta dot, phi dot. Um, so those are the six terms for the y dot squared. And then finally, we'll deal with the z. So this is the time derivative of r cosine theta. So this is only two terms. So r dot cosine theta and then r negative r sine theta, theta dot. And then squaring that, so there's two terms. So we would get four terms if we squared a uh, binomial, but as we're squaring it with itself, we only need to write down three terms because there's a cross term. That's the same. And so squaring this, we get r dot squared cosine squared theta. So that's squaring the first term. Squaring the second term, we get r squared sine squared theta, theta dot squared and then the cross term will be two negative two negative two r dot r cosine theta sine theta theta dot okay 
So now we have all of our terms. Uh, let's see what we can do. So immediately you'll notice that these orange terms are just the negatives of each other, so they'll cancel. You'll notice these pink terms are also just the negative of each other, so they'll cancel. So we've already gotten rid of four terms. And those are all that will cancel immediately, but we're gonna be able to clean this up quite a bit. So if we look at the black uh, terms now, we've got r dot squared sine squared theta. And that's in both uh, this first term in x dot and y dot squared. And then there's a sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. And then there's also this r dot squared cosine squared theta. So sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi is just one. So now this is r dot squared sine squared theta plus r dot squared uh, cosine squared theta. So again, we have a sine squared plus a cosine squared. So that just goes to one and you're left with r dot squared. Okay, so now let's look at all the red terms together. It's gonna be a similar story, r, r squared cosine squared theta. And we've got a theta dot squared out in front. And inside we've got a sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi. And then this last red term is r squared sine squared theta, theta dot squared. Okay, so the sine, phi, sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi goes to one, left with theta dot squared, r squared, cosine squared theta plus theta dot squared, r squared, sine squared theta. So again, we have a sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So when you factor that out, the cosine squared plus sine squared goes to one, and you're left with theta dot squared r squared. Okay, and then uh, this last term in brown. So, in the first term, we have cosine squared phi. And in the second term, so in this term, we have cosine squared phi. This term, we have sine squared phi. So we'll factor everything else out to r dot sine theta cosine theta theta dot. Sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi which leaves you with two r dot theta dot sine theta cosine theta Did I drop an R? Yeah, I dropped R in there. To R dot R cosine
So now you see that those two terms cancel. And then the only thing that we have left are the blue terms. And so there's two blue terms. So we have R squared sine squared theta, phi dot squared. And then from the X dot squared, we have a sine squared phi. And the Y dot squared, we have a cosine squared phi. So those go reduced to one, and you're left with r squared sine squared theta phi dot squared. And so after doing all of that math, we're left with three terms. And these are the three terms that are going to go into your Lagrangian for the kinetic energy. So you're Lagrangian in spherical coordinates. Looks like this. So the kinetic energy, you can just plug in one half M times R dot squared plus R squared theta dot squared plus r squared sine squared theta phi dot squared minus the potential. So if your system is conveniently set up for spherical coordinates, uh, you can just immediately write down this Lagrangian and start working your problem from there, uh, writing down your Euler-Lagrange equation and trying to solve those uh, differential equations. So just like you could start with writing down the Lagrangian in Cartesian coordinates, it's equally valid to just start from this Lagrangian and work your problem from there. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.